Greetings from Dr. Peter McLuhan, your host for another adventure in the life Jesus bottled. Our topic today is the spirit of Christmas. The spirit of Christmas is more than goodwill, cards, and cheer. The spirit of Christmas is recognizing that the power of God was released by the spirit of God making the miraculous birth of Jesus possible. Without the presence and power of Holy Spirit, there would be no reason to celebrate Christmas. The spirit of Christmas is more than parties and presents. The spirit of Christmas is not a feeling. It is a spiritual reality. While religious people debate when Jesus was born, Mary had no doubt that she gave birth to a son. Christmas is not about a date. It is about the arrival of the most important guest the world ever received. Mary gave birth to a son whom Gabriel announced was God in the form of a baby. On the day of Jesus' dedication in the temple, Luke tells us that an old man by the name of Simeon came in the spirit into the temple. It is in that spirit that I speak to you today. I invite you to enter into the true spirit of Christmas by allowing Holy Spirit to fill you with his presence. Come Holy Spirit and fill every person listening to this message. My purpose in this message is to draw our attention to the work of the Holy Spirit in the birth of Jesus, whom Gabriel said was Emmanuel, God with us. Holy Spirit moved upon the great prophets of the Old Testament to prophesy about the coming of this Messiah. Over 700 years before the birth of Jesus, prophet Isaiah was moved by the Spirit of God to write. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and you shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14. As the fullness of time came for Messiah to be born, Holy Spirit became active preparing the hearts of those God chose to bring about his plan. It all began with a virgin by the name of Mary. Matthew says, the birth of Jesus took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 18. And when Mary asked, how would this be possible? Angel Gabriel said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. Luke chapter 1 and verse 35. The spirit of Christmas comes alive when we open our hearts to God and give him space to conceive new ideas and ways for us to follow him. The spirit of Christmas comes alive when we say with Mary, let it be done to me according to your word. Luke chapter 1 and verse 38. Then the angel Gabriel spoke to Joseph about God's plan to conceive in Mary's womb and to birth the Savior of the world. Joseph's first thought was to quietly separate himself from Mary. But Luke tells us, as he considered these things, behold, an angel from the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her womb is from Holy Spirit. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 20. The spirit of Christmas comes alive when young men believe that God has a good plan, even when it is not their first choice. 
after Holy Spirit moved upon Mary, she went to visit her aunt Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with Holy Spirit. Luke chapter 1 and verse 41. <clears throat> the spirit of Christmas comes alive when older women are filled with the Holy Spirit. Not only was Elizabeth filled with Holy Spirit, her son was also filled with Holy Spirit. Luke says, Gabriel announced to Zechariah that their son to be born must be called John, and he will be great before the Lord and will be filled with Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. Luke chapter 1 and verse 15. The spirit of Christmas comes alive when children at a very young age and even in their mother's womb are filled with Holy Spirit. After John was born, his father Zechariah prophesied over his life. Luke records, Zechariah was filled with Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God, for he has visited and redeemed his people and raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Luke chapter 1, verse 67 through 69. The Spirit of Christmas comes alive when fathers are filled with Holy Spirit and prophesy over their children. On the eighth day, after Jesus was born, Mary and Joseph brought Jesus to the temple to dedicate him to the Lord according to the custom of the law of God. As they entered the temple, they met a spirit-filled prophet. Luke says, Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and Holy Spirit was upon him. Luke chapter 2 and verse 25. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ, and he came in the Spirit into the temple. Luke chapter 2 verse 26 and 27. He took Jesus in his arms and blessed God and said, My eyes have seen your salvation, that you have prepared in the presence of all people a light of revelation for the Gentiles and for the glory of your people Israel. Luke chapter 2, verse 28 through 32. Aren't you so glad Luke emphasized that Jesus is a light of revelation for the Gentiles. The spirit of Christmas comes alive when old men are filled with Holy Spirit and help others see God's plan of revelation, his plan of salvation for Gentiles and all. As John prepared the way for Jesus, to minister, he preached a very clear message. He said, I baptize you with water for repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He, he will baptize you with Holy Spirit and fire. Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. Come, Holy Spirit, in fire and rest upon people listening today. <clears throat> All of these encounters brought the spirit of Christmas alive in the first century. And the spirit of Christmas remains alive in the hearts of all who are filled and led by Holy Spirit. Then on the day of Pentecost, Holy Spirit was given to the followers of Jesus. Peter, quoting from the prophet Joel, said, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Acts chapter 2 and verse 17. The spirit of Christmas is not just a holiday. It is the spirit of the living God given to the followers of Jesus, living his life through our days, through every day of our life. Open your heart to Jesus. 
invite Holy Spirit to release the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christmas, into your life every day. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. Before I leave you, let me take a moment and pray for you. I invite you to invite Holy Spirit to release revelation to you about the spirit of Christmas. A Savior has been born. He was born for you. He was born for everyone. Receive him as your Savior today. Come, Holy Spirit. Give revelation to Gentiles listening to this message that you are indeed, as Gabriel announced, the Savior of the world, Emmanuel, God with us. Ask Jesus to save you of your sin and to give you the gift of the Holy Spirit that John promised he would give to us. Holy Spirit, fill people's lives right now with your presence. Holy Spirit, come and fire and baptize people uh, to know that there is a living God with whom they can have a personal and close encounter. Thank you, Lord, for this blessed season. Birth new ideas in people's hearts and minds as we pass through the season and on the eve of a new year, that God will release a new thought to you and a new direction in your life, and you'll have revelation from God about what he wants you to do to fulfill the purposes of the kingdom of God in your generation. If you have been touched by Holy Spirit and received Jesus as your Savior, even during this message, write to me and let me know what God has done for you. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.